and my assistant principal, Mrs. Colbach, we just want to welcome you to our 2018 Winter Concert. We have quite a treat for you today. We'll have our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade uh, uh, band and our PFY band will be performing tonight. So I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Kiefer and we want you to have a great, great evening. So enjoy. Mr. Kiefer. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, we have, I think we have just enough seats. So thank you for joining us. Uh, well, I was trying to make sure everybody is well set up. Uh, I did want to get started right on 7, so uh, thank you for being here right away, and then we're going to have a really great concert for you this evening. Uh, the first group you're going to see is the 6th grade concert band. Uh, so we have a 40 people up here right now, uh, all different sections, and then uh, they've been playing since they started in 5th grade and then have been continuing into this middle school transition. So we're excited to premiere a few different selections for you. After that, we'll have the PFY band, which is a combination of all three grades, followed by the seventh grade symphonic band, one piece by the seventh and eighth grade combined band, and finally the eighth grade wind ensemble will conclude the evening. Uh, the Midnight Suite is the sixth grade concert band piece, and the Midnight Suite is a combination of three different movements that were all written by Brian Balmages, who I had the honor and privilege of studying with at Towson University this semester with conducting lessons. So. Uh, I'm going to be incorporating a lot of his instruction into my own performance this evening and hopefully through that have been able to help the 6th graders, the 7th and 8th graders all learn their music uh, better and they've been able to get a lot of great feedback from a professional composer, adjudicator, and clinician who comes around a lot all over the country, all over the world. His pieces have been performed everywhere. Uh, he was uh, pro formerly the principal trumpet player of Miami Symphony before coming up, and he lives in Baltimore currently. He has a couple kids, uh, and uh, he is teaching at Towson now. So Midnight Suite is three movements. Uh, the first is Midnight Mission, and it's supposed to capture the excitement and energy of people on a kind of a journey. Uh, we applied it to a holiday context, if anyone's seen the Christmas Chronicles of Santa trying to save Christmas by the time the sun comes up. So uh, there's a lot of obstacles that come along the way. It's really exciting, a lot of different things to listen for. Uh, everyone gets to play the melody at a different spot. So it's really fun to be able to put the sixth grade band music together because uh, in the previous year of fifth grade, they most of what they played were all full band arrangements with the same line of music. Uh, but in this context, everyone gets a chance to play the melody, the harmony, the bass line, different accompaniment roles. Uh, so it's a lot more advanced and a lot more fun. So I hope they really enjoy putting together Midnight Mission. start of our concert that Brian Belmage uh, wrote these pieces a little while ago 
for his son. Um, before he was born, he started writing music, and he wanted to dedicate it to him that when his son was born and grew up and started playing music, that they could be his first pieces that he could start to play as a, as a beginning band member. Uh, so Midnight Mission was before his son was born, and then this was while his wife was pregnant, uh, Midnight Sky. And him and his wife were trying to find moments where they were just trying to be very calm, very peaceful. Uh, it's a beautiful moment of musical solitude in which listeners can close their eyes and imagine a quiet moment under the stars, uninterrupted by the hustle and bustle of everyday life. We often forget to embrace those moments of peace and tranquility. This work seeks to bring that calmness back into our lives. And uh, Brian writes in the score that a lot of directors shy away from doing slower works because directors are scared that their bands necessarily won't be able to play it well. But uh, we took on the challenge, uh, and they've been very mature in their approach of how they've been able to pull the song together and uh, capture the right kinds of emotions and expression in the types of music that we're doing. So I hope you enjoy Midnight Sky. Midnight Sweet uh, is Midnight Madness, and this was written slightly after uh, they had their child. All three are dedicated to their son, and it was when he was about 10 weeks old, and they suddenly realized that the calmness and the peacefulness was not so full-time, uh, and they started to experience a little bit more of the midnight madness, uh, the crying, the craziness, so I'm sure Brian writes that a lot of other parents may be able to relate with that. Um, but before we get into Midnight Madness, I do want to mention that once his son was born, they did name him Jacob. And we realized that after uh, all the current events of the past semester took place, and we realized as we were learning these songs that we really wanted to dedicate our Midnight Suite to Jacob Sloan, uh, since they were all about his excitement and his passion for music and his excitement for uh, being in the band. So we wanted to dedicate, especially in this Midnight Madness that I think Jacob Sloan would have really enjoyed, really appreciated, and really had fun playing um, to him this evening before we finish up our Midnight Suite. So this is dedicated to Brian Baumage's son, Jacob, and also our Peak Jacob.
quick transition, but just so uh, you get a chance to see our full band, sometimes we're kind of hidden in the, in the different rows, so I'm going to have the uh, percussionists just wave really quick, say hi, we're in the back here. Uh, the third row, could you stand up? We have our trumpets and our low brass section. Could you stand up? We can always see in the back, so we get a chance to see them. And then the saxophones in row two, please stand. And then finally, the clarinets and flutes in row one. Please stand up. I just have to say it's been a very fun semester with these, this group. Every year is so much, uh, so much better and so much more exciting to see the, the culture of our appreciation for the arts and our music program and everything. It's just been a lot of fun uh, to see every grade come up through. This is my sixth year at Mattapique, and every year is so different. Every year is so much fun, and I really appreciate the... Uh, energy and excitement and drive and determination that this group's really brought to our program. Uh, so thank you for uh, your support of our sixth graders. We're going to have a quick transition to our PFY band. Jacob Fulton is a pianist outside of school, and he's going to be doing some transition music in between each group, so I appreciate him playing piano for us this evening. Thanks, Jacob. The group on stage is the PFY Band. We meet after school on Mondays from 3 to 5 once a week, uh, and then we have, uh, it's pretty fun because we have the 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade all represented of different instruments, and it's really been fun to see them come together as a group and have a lot of fun together. Uh, we will be marching with the Kent Island High School Pioneers uh, Parade in Centerville tomorrow night. So if you are looking for us and the high school, we'll be doing the Centerville Christmas Parade. Uh, we have our nice new Mattapique Middle School Band jackets that we'll be representing, so they look really awesome. Uh, it's been a really fun semester, and we're going to be doing a song called School Spirit for you this evening out of one of our uh, books, and you may recognize it as a popular song that a lot of people use as their uh, school fight song. It's not our Kent Island fight song, but maybe that's next on the agenda. I hope you like School Spirit. I'm going to be guest starring on bass drum in the back, so these guys can both get to play snare drum. Uh, any sixth graders that are still here, you guys can join the rest of your class. 
and then seventh grade can come up. Eighth grade again, you can join your class. Seventh grade, if you're in seventh grade, you can stay up here. But seventh grade again, you guys can come on up. on stage is the 7th grade symphonic band, which is a combination of all the different instruments you've seen before, but a few people have switched to secondary instruments. Uh, Emily Miller's on barry sax instead of alto, Evan Newcomer's on tenor sax instead of alto, and Morgan Phipps is on bass clarinet instead of uh, the regular clarinet that you see in row one. So uh, you'll have a little bit different instrumentation than last year, uh, and again, we've experienced a lot more musicality, a lot more advanced in, in our pieces that we're being able to work on. The first song is called Imperium by Michael Sweeney, and it uh, captures a lot of different moods, a lot of different energy, and uh, once again, a lot of different sections will have different parts played that are important at different times. So they pass around the melody throughout the band, so sometimes it's easier to hear, sometimes it's a little more hidden. So I encourage you to try to hear the melody in all different sections of the band, and try to capture the excitement of Imperium that we have in uh, Imperium, uh, Michael Sweeney's arrangement. I hope you like it.
Our next arrangement for the seventh grade band is called Ding Dong Merrily on High. And this is a popular French dance song about bells. So uh, in French it's Chanson et Danse Francaise. And then it's from the melody entitled Danse Officielle. It was uh, first published uh, around the 16th century, so this melody has been around a long time, and you may recognize it from a lot of different holiday movies that you see on TV, but uh, the original one is from France, and uh, once again, you'll hear the melody get passed around a lot. Uh, there's a lot of different percussion features throughout, and a lot of different people get to play the melody at different times, so it's been a really fun, really energetic arrangement to get us into the holiday season. You'll get to hear one more statement of this melody when the eighth graders come back up in the final selection, so this is the prerequisite to uh, hearing the eighth grade night before Christmas that you'll see later tonight. up in a second, but since they're going to be joining us, I'm going to acknowledge the seventh graders since this was their final one by themselves. Uh, once again, I can have the percussionists just say hi from in the back, all the percussionists. We have a lot of them this year in seventh grade, so say hello. They don't want to say hello. Hi, percussionists. And then the uh, trumpets, saxophones, and trombones in row two, you guys can stand up. And then the front row with clarinets and boots, please stand up. Yes, right, guys, thank you so much for an awesome song. If I could have the eighth graders come join us on the stage for our combined piece entitled At Twilight, that would be phenomenal. And Jake's going to play one more song. Apologies for the music stand dilemma. So this was a piece that we originally planned on doing uh, early in the year, and as the year went along, I decided this would be a great one to do combined with the 7th and 8th because of the advanced musicality it incorporates. Uh, Tyler Grant is a phenomenal, very young composer. He had his first piece published when he was 14 in high school, freshman in high school, and since then he's been releasing works every year, and all of them have been very, very amazing pieces of music. The 8th graders on stage last year did Castlegate 19, 24, which was a, a lot of fun, which they really enjoyed, and I wanted to bring another piece by him back. So the 7th and 8th grader uh, bands have both been able to pull this together really well. And Tyler writes this, uh, he wrote this piece when he was, I believe, 18 or 19 years old, and writes this in the program notes. Today we live in a world of chaos and noise. Often we find ourselves racing between work, family, travel, school, etc., so much that we tend to lose track of how quickly life is going by. Amidst all this chaos, I try to find time each day to relax and reflect on life itself, oftentimes in the evening, at twilight, as the noise of the world around me fades into silence. Frequently, I'm recharging my batteries more than just reflecting, but doing so in a truly peaceful way. 
The piece at twilight captures the reflection and rest that I experienced during this time without the interruptions of cell phones, email, and other connections to the outside world. It is my hope that listeners will take just a few moments and experience this quiet, this tranquil feeling that comes at twilight. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have the seventh grade band exit the stage, and eighth grade will get into two selections that they will play independently. I'll start introducing as they're getting set up. Uh, this first piece that the eighth graders are doing by themselves is called Fanfare for the Unsung Hero. And there's, a, again, program notes by Matt Conway, the composer of this piece that we started working on earlier this year that I would like to read to you that describes the context of the song. An unsung hero is one whose good deeds are rarely acknowledged or rewarded. There is a tremendous amount of music written for those who have demonstrated brave actions and earned global acclaim and praise, but I wanted to give a musical thank you to those who work behind the scenes to make our communities better places to live. This might be the anonymous donor who funds a shelter for the homeless, the volunteer who works with disadvantaged youth, the parent who comes in to rescue on a band trip, or a friend who provides a shoulder to cry on when it is needed most. Please think of those unsung heroes in your life as you listen to this work and give them the heartfelt thank you they so richly deserve when you see them next.
going to conclude with a familiar holiday collection of uh, songs that you may recognize. It's not just one, uh, it's the night before Christmas, but they take the familiar Clement Clark Moore poem and interspersed between the poem are different holiday carols that try to demonstrate exactly what's going on in the text. So to guest narrate, we have our fine arts supervisor for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, who's new this year, his name's Michael Bell, uh, and he's graciously came to support us and read for us this evening. So I hope you uh, can welcome Michael Bell, and I hope you enjoy our final selection the night before Christmas. St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. 
His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was all drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of his pipe he held right in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all his stockings, and turned with a jerk, and laying the finger on the side of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose, and he sprang to the sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. Before I heard him exclaim, as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you.